Hi guys, it's Keith from IELTS Speaking Success and I'm here to help you build your speaking skills so you can get the confidence you need for the IELTS speaking test. In this video, I'm going to give you some more formulas to structure your part two answers and some great language to help you become confident and flexible when talking about places for part two. Let's get straight into it. I'm really excited about this video. Um, it's the third in a series of six where each one we're looking at a category to talk about in part two. And the categories are people, places, events, activities and things. And this video is all about places. So let's kick off first of all looking at some typical questions or indeed recent questions from IELTS part two. And here we've got describe a place where you read and write but not your home. Describe a public building you would like to visit. Describe a place you have visited with friends. Or describe an open air market you enjoyed visiting. So all of these are examples of places, right? So when it comes to places, I think there are always four things we can talk about. You can talk about where it is, what it looks like, what you can do there, and how you feel about it. Now, depending on the question, there may be other things you need to say. Um, you may want to talk about who you went with, a place you visited with friends, well, who you went with. But I think for all of these questions, uh, we can talk about where, how it looks, uh, what it looks like, and what you can do there, and how you feel about it. Okay, so let's begin with where it is. And the classic answer everybody says is, I live in London, which is located in the south of England, or da 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 is located in. So if it's a town or a city, let's mash it up a bit. You can say it can be found in the south of England. I live in Manchester, which can be found in the north of England. Okay, it can be found. You can talk about cities, buildings, houses, parks. There's a lovely park which can be found not far from my house. Okay. If it's not very well known, you can say it's a little known place. It's a little known place near my house. Or it's hidden away. It's hidden away in the back streets. There's this lovely restaurant, right? And it's hidden away in the back streets near my home. Even better than hidden away is tucked away. It's less common, it's more colloquial, but that's just what you need, right? For your IELTS band seven, it's tucked away. You'll have to get the connection tucked away, tucked away. It's tucked away in the back streets, or it's tucked away in a small part of the town. It's tucked away in the city center, okay? And you see what I'm doing, right? I'm substituting. So when you get your language template or phrase, substitute, substitute, get the practice in. This is what you need to be doing all the time as you're practicing. Okay, so that lovely restaurant, it's tucked away in the back streets. So not the main streets, but the small back streets, because that's where the best restaurants are always found, right? Um, maybe you say it's in a secluded neighborhood. So secluded means isolated, not a lot of people, fairly quiet, a secluded area, a secluded neighborhood. It's a secluded place. So it's in a secluded neighborhood. My dad, who lives in Manchester, which can be found in the north of England, um, he lives in a secluded neighborhood. It's hidden away in the, the kind of the back streets of this town. Okay, you get the idea. Finally, if it's in the middle of the city, why not say it's slap bang in the middle of the city? Slap, 
bang, right in the middle. It's slap bang in the middle of the city. Again, unusual vocabulary, but really good to get your band seven. Okay, so there is some language talking about where it is. Let's talk about what it looks like. So maybe we're talking about a city, but maybe we're talking about a building. So if we're talking about a building, um, it could be a weather beaten building. So that means the weather has taken its toll. So I mean the weather has hit the building, the rain and the wind, and it's getting older. It's falling to pieces a little bit. It's deteriorating, deteriorating. <laughs> So a weather beaten building as really you can see the force of the weather on the building. So typically a beachfront house can be a weather beaten building because of all of the wind coming from the sea. A house you may want to say is fully furnished. If you're describing the house and thinking about the inside as well as the outside, a fully furnished house. Some houses, when you rent them, are semi-furnished. If it's got all the furniture, it's fully furnished. Some buildings are high-rise buildings. So in many city centres, in order to solve the problem of overcrowded, overcrowding, they have built high-rise buildings, a bit like this. And many of them, well, at least in the 1960s and 70s, were made out of concrete. So you have a high rise concrete building. On the other hand, you may have a beautiful house that looks like a palace. And that is a palatial building. So any big beautiful house like a palace is a palatial building. Uh, maybe it has spectacular architecture. You can talk about the design, the architecture, um, instead of going into details about whether it's Victorian or Roman, just say it's spectacular. It has spectacular architecture. Great. Now, if we talk about cities, well, when it comes to cities, what do we want to say? We can say it's a picturesque town. So it looks like a picture, like a painting, right? It's a picturesque town. If it's a busy city, it can be a bustling, vibrant city. So London is a bustling, vibrant city that can be found in the south of England. And you may also have, on the other hand, um, an unspoiled neighbourhood. You may have neighbourhoods that are still very green, um, have not been damaged or spoiled by roads and factories and pollution. Maybe it's an unspoilt neighbourhood. So these are different phrases we can use to talk about buildings and cities or towns or villages. Great. Let's talk about what you can do there. Well, what can you do? We can use, I've got here four expressions. You can, notice it's not you can, you can. You can go hiking. You can shop you can find lots of restaurants. You can da, 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 da. Um, You can shop till you drop. I love that expression. I hate shopping, but my wife shops till she drops. She's in the shopping mall like for four hours. Boom, boom, boom. So you can shop till you drop or you can get away from the crowd. So to be honest, when my wife is shopping, I go out of the shopping mall, find a little cafeteria, coffee bar, go for a coffee, just to get away from the crowd. And it's great because that shopping mall, which is slap bang in the city center, um, well, you can shop till you drop, but you can get away from the crowds too. <clears throat> Second expression is, it's a great place to, it's a great place to, <laughs> t, because the two becomes t, and then it's a great place to get away from the crowds. It's a great place to get away from it all. Um, it's a great place to buy clothes. I'm still on the shopping mall. Let's think of a beach. 
or a holiday resort, it's a great place to get away from the crowds. It's a great place to relax, to chill out, to let your hair down, to hang loose. It's a great place to try new food, okay? I'm doing all the substituting. It should be you doing the substituting. So start substituting now. It's a great place to Great. Now, number three, the next one is people typically like to, to or to, people typically like to see the sights. Go to London, people typically like to see the sights. People typically like to eat out or people typically like to shop. So typically just means usually, but it's a nice expression, right? People typically it's a hard one. People typically like to. So slow down. Do it really slowly. People typically like to. People typically like to. People typically like to. Keep practicing. Okay, number four. It's well known for its cuisine. So maybe that's a city or a restaurant. It's well known for its cuisine. It's well known for its tranquil atmosphere. It's well known for its shops. So you can see there's a lot to talk about. Four nice expressions start practicing and substitute. I'm going to move on and have a look now at how you feel about it. Of course, you can say, well, I love it. I adore it. Um, or how about I reckon it's awesome. I reckon it's fantastic. I reckon it's outstanding. I reckon it's out of this world. So all really nice ways to say it's brilliant. I fell over. I fell over. Probably I did. I fell head over heels in love with it. I fell head over heels in love with it. It's a nice expression, just meaning you really, really, really like it. Great. So we have seen places talking about where it is, uh, how it looks or what it looks like, what to do there, what you can do there and how you feel about it. Brilliant. Now, let me move on to give you a sample answer to a part two question about places. And I'm going to incorporate some of these ideas so you can get a feeling for how to use them and then you can go and start practicing. OK, let's try this. Describe a place you have visited with your friends. So a few months ago, uh, my family and I went with some friends to visit a cave uh, not too far from where we live. It's really hidden away in the mountains, but only about half an hour's drive from our home. So the cave is actually closed to the public, but they've built a replica in a kind of museum right next door. It's an impressive modern building slap bang in the middle of the most picturesque scenery you can imagine. It's what you might call a smart building. Um, so the lights go on when you enter a room. It has these automatic sliding doors. And the cave area has um, self-regulating air conditioning. So you can visit the cave and see all of the cave paintings, uh, well, copies, that date back thousands of years. There's a cafeteria, um, a kind of coffee shop, where people typically have a tea or a cup of coffee after seeing the cave. And of course, there's the obligatory souvenir shop. Uh, where you can pick up a souvenir to remember your visit. I love the place. I felt it was fantastic. And it's a smashing place to take kids um, as it takes them on this really vivid journey back to the past. I would definitely recommend it without a doubt. <laughs> Great. So there you have it sample answer. Now it's time for you to get practicing. If you liked this video, please subscribe and share it. And also, if you want to find out lots more 
part two sample answers with really rich vocabulary, check out my online course, IELTS Speaking Part 2. It's got lots of sample answers. It's full of the really good language, just like this, that you need to get a high score in IELTS Speaking. That's it from me. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.